Good morning, learners. Grade 2 and grade 3 are you still with me. Okay, what are you doing at home? You must always keep active. You must run around. You must run around. You must keep yourself busy and do not forget to do what? To do your schoolwork. After you are done with every book, you must do what? Turn it back to your teacher for marking so that you can see your progress. Are we together? Thank you. Okay, good morning, my friend. All right, my friend is very fine here, and I'm sure he's going to help me with everything that we are going to go through in order to help you at home as well. Welcome to my zone online school. My name is Teacher Mudabeti. Our theme for this week is local media. Before we start with our topic for today, I would like to remind you to sanitize your hands. Spray it in, rub it in, rub out between your fingers. Your hands are now very clean. Our lesson for today is on phonics, homonyms, digraphs, determines. Okay, with the grade two. The grade twos, I hope you are still with me there. We are going to learn about the phonics. Now the phonics that we are going to look at is that one, the O and the W, the O and W, the O and W. When they are together like that, we say O, O. Okay, all right. So let's look at page 20. There is a word search. We have to find the words which are having the O sound, the O and the W sound in the word search there. It's not very difficult. I know you will do this in just a minute. Now you first read the words here so that it's easy for you to find them. And once you have found them, you have to check with them for me. Are we together? And then I will check with you. The words that you have to search, they are just below. Under the box here, under the word search, there are words which are there. Cow, bow, fall, town, row, clown, tower, shower, now, brown. So find for me all these words and say to them. I will check with you. That was a quick one, grade twos. We are not yet done. Let's quickly go to page 21 and see what we can do there as well. Okay, we are going to look at the homonyms. All right, okay, the homonyms are two words that are spelled the same and sound the same, but they have different meanings. Sometimes the spelling can also be different, but those words, when you read them, it's like you are reading the same word until you write it. That's when you can spot out the difference between the two words. No, those are the homonyms. Now let's check on our sentences here, and they are words which we are given on the right uh, column there. Which words between the two will best fit in each statement? Okay, so you read the sentence first. After reading the sentence, then that is when you can find out which word, which homonym will suit. Okay, number one. The cat caught the mm of a mouse. The cat caught the mm of a mouse. Are you with me? The two possible answers is scent. Both of them are read as scent. But which one do you think we are talking about in this statement? Okay, is it the scent? The first scent is of a smell, and the second scent is of the money. So now, the cat... What did the cat catch here? It caught the scent of a mouse. Which scent? I think it's the first one. So if it's the first one, it's the one that you choose. You put it in the line there and you read your sentence. It will make sense. 
The second one, a mm rest with a tortoise. A mm rest with a tortoise. The two possible answers are there. Hair. Which hair are we talking about here? Is it a hair? The first hair is my hair on my head. And the second hair is of an animal. You know the small hair? Those hairs, the one that runs very quick, they are small animals. Okay, so which one did the tortoise race with? Okay, I think it's the hair of an animal because a tortoise cannot race with the hair on the head. Okay, so you take that hair, which is correct, and put it in the statement. Then that statement will make sense. So I want you to continue with number 3 up to number 14. Please read the statement first and understand it. That's when you are going to be able to choose the correct homonym to fill in the sentence. Okay, grade 2, enjoy that. Now, let's go to page 22. Grade 2, I hope you are still with me there. All right. Please come with me to page 22, where we are going to look at the diagram. Okay. Now, we are going to find and color the words in the correct color. We have got colors which are given to us there. To the sounds that we are to do here, we have the sh sound, which is this and the ha, when they are together. We have the p and the ha, when they are together, we say sh. We have the t and the, and the ha. When they are together, we take out our tongue. We have a k for a cat and a ha. When they are together, we say it's a ch. We have a w and a ha. We say w. Okay, so now, find and color the words in the correct color. So they have given you and they have indicated to you what are you supposed to color, what color are you supposed to use. For all the sh words, you have to color what color? Red. The p and the h, which is a f sound, blue. The t and the h, which is a f sound, yellow. The cup and the hub, which is ch, will color green. The whoop and the hub, which is ch, you color orange. So find those words and color them accordingly. Then it will be correct. Okay. Now, you tell me how many you found in the correct box and answer the questions which are below. Now, how many sh sounds did you find? You write the answer, just the number under the sh in that box. The f, also the f, the ch, and the h. And then answer the questions that follows under. Which digraph did you find the most of? Which digraph did you find the most? Which digraph did you find the least of? Which digraph did you find the least, which was less? Few of them. Which digraph? Which two had the same number of words? Which two sounds here are having the same number of words? I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. Please finish up all the sounds that I have given to you. I'll check with you very soon. Let's go over to page 23 with the grade tools. I hope you are still with me, grade tools. Okay, we are going to look at the determines, the words which are determines. We are only going to look at the words which are on that page, which are some or any. Only two of them that we are going to look at. There are a lot of determiners words but we are going to only look at some and any. Okay, you are going to circle some or any to make the sentence correct. Now, before we do that, how will you know which word is the correct one which I have to circle there to make my statements correct or to make my sentences correct? All right. Okay, some is used for positive statements, questions, or offers, or when you request for something, ne? 
We, it's also used with countable and uncountable nouns. Uh, and any is used for questions and for negative statements. It's also used with countable and uncountable nouns. So, for example, if I want to use some in a sentence or in a statement, is, let me give you an example of how to use a sum. You have some butter on your chin. I'm telling someone, you have some butter on your chin. Then I've used some. Let's go home. Let's go and have some fun. That is a positive statement. Let's go and have some fun. Now, okay, and what other uh, statement can I use? I'm sure I will return to Namibia someday. You are sure that if you are looking forward, it's a positive statement. What about if I have to use any? We don't have any sugar. That is a negative statement. Do you have any brothers or sisters? I'm asking. It's a question. I don't need any help. That is another example of using any. Now let's try and look at these sentences here and try and see if you can get some out of them correct. Just read it properly before you underline or say who you answer. There is some or any milk in the fridge. There is some or any milk in the fridge. What do you think we should underline there? Or what do you think? Which word? Is it some or any? Okay. I think we are going to underline some. There is some milk in the fridge. That is a positive statement. There is some milk in the fridge. What about number two? We don't need some or any flour. Which word am I going to say? Is it some or any? I think we are going to say any. We don't need any flour. Okay. You can also do number three. Can I have some or any water, please? Can I have some or any water, please? I am asking. It's a request. So I will use some. Can I have some water, please? So you are going to say call some. Okay, do the rest also on your own. Do number four up to number 16. Enjoy reading and practicing which word will be the best answer on each statement. Now let's go over to page 24. I'm still with the grade threes, with the grade twos, I mean. Come with me, grade twos. Now we are going to distinguish between the long and the short vowel sounds. We are going to distinguish between the long and the short vowel sounds. Okay. We can only do that by reading the words first and listen to them. How do they sound? If they are long vowels, we pull it when we read it. If they are short, it's just short. We just read it and cut it. In short, that is a short vowel sound. Okay, you are going to read each word in the box below. Tell if the word has a long vowel sound or short vowel sound by writing it on the lines below. If it has got a long vowel sound, write it on the left side. If it has a short vowel, write it on the right side. So the words are given to you there in the table above. Stop, lead, mud, stain, smile, bone, pie, mool, stay, pray, lead, mug, cat, mool, lord, peel, steal, bug, bite, sun, pig, boat. Which words are having a long sound? Those ones, you write them on the left, and the ones which are short, write them on the right side of the paper. Okay, let me now take the grade threes with me over to page 25. Grade threes, come with me. Yours is a bit challenging now. You have to use your brains and you have to check. But it's not complicated. Just enjoy it. You use the codes and write the names of the different communication 
on the space provided. We have a lot of communication tools that we use. And the codes are given to us on the alphabets. And we use those codes to get the word which is correct. And that word should be a communicating tool. All right. Okay. So each alphabet is having a code. Now let's take the first one together and see the example. Now check the first code which is there. And go on in the table there with the alphabets and check which alphabet is that code. I think it's a, it's a N, it's a N sound. And check the second one, that dot, a big dot, it's on the A, A of an elephant. You can write it under every code there. And the third one is a nice flower there. It's on which alphabet? On the W. And the next one, three corner lines there, looking on my right hand side. I think it's the S, the S. And the next one, two lines which are standing up. And it is on the P, the P. And the next one is a square, which is bold, which is colored dark. And it's on the A. And the next one again is the two lines standing up. It's a P. And the next one is a dot, a big dot, which is dark. It's on the E. And the next ones are three corner lines which are looking now on the left side. I think that one is the one which is on the R. Now, when I connect all these letters of alphabet, what word is it? It should be a communicating tool. Otherwise, then it's wrong. What I found here myself is newspaper. Did you get the same like mine? Okay, if you got it the same way like mine, then you are correct, I think. That is a newspaper. Now, I want you to try the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth chords. Please find for me the names of those communicating tools. You just have to look on the chords and write the alphabet that corresponds with that uh, letter, with that chord. Then you find the word. I think this one is more enjoyable. Please continue doing it, continue doing it and finish it up. I'll check with you when we come back. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed the lesson for today. Now let me remind you of the things that we have to do during this COVID-19. Remember to keep your distance away from other people of 1 meter or 1.5 meter. When you do like this, you mustn't touch the next person. Then you are correct. Okay, now let us sanitize our hands. We have to do this every time to keep your hands off germs. Rub it in, rub it out, and between your fingers. Then your hands are germ-free. Let's call upon our friend Zoshi to say goodbye. Goodbye, friends. Hi, everyone. My name is Shashi. I'm back. And you can always stay active throughout the lockdown. Uh, you can play with your friends, but keep your distance. Like me, my friend. Yay! And you can also talk and sing to be active. Until next time, bye!
I'm, feel, I'm feeling so bad because of you. I have been arrested. We are trying to sell to provide our kids with food, but the police they come to arrest us. I was literally apprehended in Independence Avenue. I mean, there was no prior communications with, uh, with the police or with Bonn or Bangor Namibia. These guys literally just apprehended us on surprise. And when you are talking in a manner that is exaggerated about brutality in this country, I should ask you in which country you live. Yes, I can confirm that uh, indeed there were two cell phones that were found after a search was conducted at the cells that the fish rod uh, accused us staying. Do you understand the amount of money that the government has spent on the fight against COVID-19? Could they have spent 300 million on tracing people and managing people? Is that even possible? Today we visit well-known and loved sculptor Dörte Banner on her farm southeast of Vintuk. In 1966, Dörte moved to Namibia with her husband Volker, where the couple found their inspiration from the isolation of the Kalahari. She is a true pioneer of Namibian visual art, sometimes creating enormous pieces that weigh over half a ton. Although her sculptures can be seen in public spaces in Vintuk, as well as adorning private collections around the world, the permanent exhibition at her home on farm Piepakoro houses the largest collection of her work, producing over 350 works over six decades, with more than 40 exhibitions across four continents under her belt. She is a true Namibian icon. My name is Dörte Berner. I was born in Germany in that time in Posen. We were refugees of the war of 1945 and I grew up in Hamburg-Bergedorf. I went to school there and I found with 14 years that I wanted to be a stone carver. When we went to the, my grandmother and I to the graveyard, to my grandfather's grave, we always passed gravestone chiseler or how you call them and um, I was so intrigued by it that I asked him for a piece of stone and he gave it to me and I with a screwdriver and a hammer I did my first try and I knew immediately it's my work it's my future and because we were refugees it was hopeless to really aim directly to it and because my parents were we were very poor in a way because they got only two suitcases which they could save from the, their living beforehand. And so I had to work very early and help myself with help in the family. And my first stone I did in 1962, um, I think. We went with the last money we had. We came with 100 D-Mark here to Namibia in that time, 66. We ended up uh, with a train, we came up with a train, it took three days almost, two days, and sitting in a compartment. We are in the meantime now more than 50 years in this country. We are very happy to still live here and work here. But we are old people now in the meantime, but still enjoy life. Geht zu Volker, Pepita geht zu Volker to talk about this stone carving or chiseling of and making sculpture. It's my passion and I can't explain it. It's my way to express myself and I love stones. I love the work with the stone and I feel totally at home with stone chiseling and the expression comes while you Think about it all the time. You all the time, if you are doing at artwork, you, you can't separate it from your life. 
Your eye is always looking, your mind is always working. And the human condition, the, the people and nature is at something which moves me very much and which I'm deeply involved in thinking about it. And I think that life is so co interesting and so complex and so wonderful in a way but otherwise it gives you shivers when you see what people have to survive of or with what people have to endure. And otherwise how happiness can change life and so on. But you have to find always as a stone carver or as a sculptor the form to express yourself and the form is the outside of a meaning and it is the best if you balance the meaning and the material to a form. That is the best you can do and you have to respect material. You can't, I, that's why I don't work with machinery because you have to listen and to feel the stone. When I do workshops for people I try to show them the respect you need for a material as well and to find out how much response there is, how much hardness there is. A stone doesn't want to be destroyed. It's a quite a hard uh, interaction and I think the best is if the stone and you find a, agreement somehow and that is my philosophy of stone carving. A very big hello to you ladies. It's great to be with you on the show again. Yes. Welcome to Living the Life. Marriage is where the work really is. That's 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 the main So no matter how exhausted the event planner is after oh my god, I did a beautiful <laughs> wedding. She did the wedding. That's not the work. You understand? The work is the couple now. The the uterus begins to shrink mm 